But so far, President Hosni Mubarak remains in power, but it's still clear that the Obama administration is now working desperately behind the scenes with Egyptian officials and military leaders and trying to find some kind of solution to this crisis, which is now well past a week old. Uh, David Ignatius is an author and a Washington Post columnist. He joins me now. Uh, David, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Bob. What is your sense of where we are in this process? What's going on now? My sense is that the, that the balance has, has turned today a bit toward the protesters. We had some significant Egyptian political figures in Tahrir Square meeting with the protesters. The defense minister, Field Marshal Tantawi, was in the square visiting with soldiers, but also seeing the demonstrators. Amr Musa, who is a prominent Egyptian politician who'd like to be president, but when the elections are held, uh, was in the square identifying himself with the protesters. The spokesman for Al-Azhar, which is the government-backed uh, great mosque and religious uh, school, which is really the center of Sunni Islam, uh, announced today that he couldn't s speak for the government uh, mosque. He was part of the protest movement and so was going to resign his position. Those are all signs of key figures moving toward the protesters and away from President Mubarak. Uh, there are also signs that the army, after having condoned pro-Mubarak protesters is now moving towards some more balance uh, role in, in transition, not a role in, in helping Mubarak hold on. We've also been told by our folks in Cairo that there's not this uh, air of confrontation today. It's more festive. The protesters are not being bothered by uh, pro-Mubarak forces uh, per se. Is that a good sign? It is. You have to be careful in judging too much from the mood of the moment because, as we've seen this week, that can change so, so disastrously. But I, I have the same impression uh, from the people that I, that I talk to, the scenes I'm seeing on television. I, I do hear from uh, contacts of mine uh, in the Arab world and in Israel a concern that the United States has gotten so emotionally uh, attached to this uh, movement for change, understandably, it, it embraces our own democratic values, that, that we may be uh, opening Egypt up to a, a degree of instability that's dangerous for the region. If you're in Israel, this is really your worst nightmare happening, and Israelis want to make sure that the Americans don't get so caught up in this spirit of uh, revolution that they forget about U.S. interests and Israeli interests, too. So I think this is a time when, 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 when our government is being urged to be very careful as we, as we watch events unfold. As the events have unfolded, the Obama administration has been very careful to take that kind of fine line between embracing democracy but also protecting, at least in a way, the old uh, ally in Mubarak. But that's now morphed, and we hear more urgent uh, words coming out of the White House, as in the time is now. Uh, how is this morphed uh, in the administration's view? Uh, where are they now exactly? I talked with people in the White House uh, yesterday, uh, and I was able to draw a picture in my column this morning of how the president is viewing these events. And he views them in part through his own personal experience. As a boy, he grew up in an Indonesia that was governed by a corrupt dictator, uh, President Suharto, who's very much like Hosni Mubarak in some ways. And, and when the president meets with uh, human rights uh, demonstrators, even when he's been talking with his own staff over the past week, he's recalled what it feels like to be in that kind of situation. It's a personal, almost visceral feeling for him. So I think he identifies with the process of change. He also feels that once that process has really started, you can't put it back in the box. Finally, he feels that the United States has problems in the Arab world, in the Muslim world, in part because we're seen as trying to dictate events. And, and I think above all, he wants to make sure that the United States is not heavy-handed in its prescriptions, it's sort of ordering Mubarak out, uh, trying to influence events too obviously, in a way that, that would undercut the very movement that we're trying to support. So I think that if we're looking at a White House that's, in a sense, trying to balance things, uh, that, that reflects the president's own views on these different levels. But at this point, I think it's fair to say that, that there's no doubt the outcome that the White House wants to see here. No question that the White House wants Mubarak out, that they want him out now, as the president said, but also no doubt that we want to see uh, a process of transition that, that is not chronically destabilizing uh, for this part of the world. We, we do 
know that Al Qaeda, some of the key uh, figures in Al Qaeda, Ayman Zawahiri, the number two man, have their roots in Egypt. The e Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood has spawned some people who were genuinely dangerous, not only to the United States but but to countries in the region. So, uh, I think this is a, this is a, a moment. As I talk to people in the White House, where people are trying to think both about our principles, our democratic identification with the, with the protesters, and our interests and those of our allies, and somehow get those two in alignment. All right, David Ignatius, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you.